Hey guys, so with the recent change to elixirs, they have made elixirs a lot easier and a lot faster to cut than before. And as a result, I've seen a lot of people come back and tell me that they're now finally starting to cut their elixirs, starting to learn how to do it, or trying to optimize or get their first 40 set. And while I definitely have my thoughts about elixir cutting and what they've done to change it, I'll leave that for tomorrow's video. For today's video, I want to give you five things that I think that either people are A, doing too little of, or B, doing too much of and are making a mistake and really hindering them from making their elixirs a lot better than they could. Now, at the end of the day, RNG is kind of a big factor in elixirs, but I also think that I've seen a lot of people who come up to me and be like, oh, I've cut 60 elixirs and I've only gotten a 4-1 or a 5-1 or whatever it might be. And I think that while there could be a chance that they're getting extremely lucky, I think that it's definitely very highly improbable that that is happening. And a lot of that just comes down to lack of knowledge or lack of experience cutting elixirs. So I want to give you guys these tips right now. And with that, I think it's a perfect segue into my first point in that a lot of people walk into elixirs completely blind. They come in and like, okay, well, I have these elixirs. I'm going to try to cut them. Unfortunately, that isn't really the way you do it. While there is a lot of RNG that is involved in elixirs, and some people might think it's just completely RNG, there definitely is a proper way and a proper technique to cut them. And with that, I definitely recommend anybody who's starting to cut out elixirs to watch a guide. Either watch like Memorizer's Guide on how to cut an elixir, or watch my Elixir Academy series where I help people cut their elixirs and teach them while they're cutting them as well. And just get your feet wet there first. And then before diving into using your elixirs from either Voldis or maybe it's the free silver elixirs, you get some practice elixirs at 1600. And when you get that, use those to practice and learn how to cut elixirs before you start using the real elixirs. Trust me, it will save you a lot of time, a lot of headache, and a lot of money going forward. So that's tip number one. Tip number two, if you don't know any advanced techniques, please go look them up. There was a really good guy that Memorizer has put up that talks about all the different advanced techniques that he uses when he's going to cut elixirs. These advanced techniques are things like double free turn on three and one, or it's like free turn into burn on turn one, or the Zoro technique. There's a couple techniques out there that I think are good for regular use, but personally, I use the free turn into burn as the most common technique that I think is useful for cutting elixirs. And I'd say at the very minimum, you should learn how to do this. I'm going to leave a link in the description below with the memorizer video that talks about the different advanced techniques so you have easy access to that to learn how to do that today. While it may seem like just some fancy technique that you don't think you need to learn, they really do work and will give you so many more nodes on your elixirs that you will definitely feel like an idiot for not learning them beforehand. Now, the third thing is less of a technique but more of kind of a know-how and a feel. And that's really knowing when to take risks. With elixirs, as I've mentioned at the top, and as many of you guys probably know, it is a gamble. And with any gamble, there are definitely risks that you need to take. There are so many people that either A, take too many risks, or B, don't take enough risks with their elixirs, which causes them to really not get enough points on their elixirs or end up getting a lot of points subtracted from their elixir, making their elixir that went from either a good one to a bad one or a bad one just staying bad. There definitely is an art to these elixirs that you need to know when to take risks. For example, if you're very, very early on in your elixir, you definitely need to take more risks than you think. And then on the flip side, as you're nearing the end of your elixir, if your elixir is going well already, then you should definitely try not to take too many risks because you could definitely turn an elixir that could have been really good into a bad one really quickly. So learning when to take risks is extremely important. And kind of on that same note, for my next tip, I think that knowing when and how to reset your elixirs is extremely, extremely important. There are so many people that don't even know that resets exist or don't know how to trigger them. So learning that is going to be important as well. Because sometimes when you're at the beginning of your elixir and things just aren't going well, 
before it's too late, you should be like, okay, well, this is not going that well. So I'm just going to start going for a reset before you start wasting too much money or even worse, just waste the entire elixir when it could have been reset. Knowing that from the beginning and being able to see like, okay, this elixir is going south. I need to stop this and just reset is a very, very important skill. And on top of that, some people don't really even know how to reset. I know most people know that you should just go down one node and get all your purples to light up and crit and then try to reroll that for a reset. But did you actually know that you could reset your elixir all the way as far as the last turn? Yes, you can do that. If you go and get an extra turn on the last turn into a critical purple, that critical purple could actually be a reset. So just because you don't get the reset on the turn where you have the double purple and blue critical doesn't mean that that's your last opportunity to reset. You can actually reset later on into the process. And uh, lastly, this is definitely the biggest thing that I think most people make a mistake on with their elixirs. And that is to simply have fun with their elixirs. Elixirs are fun. The game's fun, right? <laughs> Just kidding. The elixirs suck. Whoever made elixirs in Smilegate definitely needs to get fired. But <laughs> on a more serious note, definitely the last piece of advice I have for you guys is to just be flexible with your elixirs. I think a lot of people have this idea in their head that they need to have a two line DPS elixir for every single slot. And while min maxing that is true, when you're first starting to get your 40 set and just trying to get that, rather than just going for the min max lines, you should actually prioritize nodes over that. So a lot of times I see that an elixir is going a certain way where a ton of points are going into a node that you don't really care about. But at the same time, those nodes are points towards your 40 set. So even if you're not having the best of luck with the nodes landing in the correct slot, as long as they are actually landing on one line often and getting you a lot of nodes in that one line, that is the most important thing. Don't reset just because it's going into a node that you're not looking for. Use that as an opportunity and be like, okay, well, I wanted this one to begin with, but this elixir is actually telling me to go this way. So I'm going to pivot and start looking for this one. It might not be the best in slot, but it's going to save you a lot of money going forward because the 40 set itself is the most important thing. While those attack damage lines will make a difference in your DPS, the big portion of your damage does come from the set bonus. So if you can just get that set bonus, that will cover the majority of the DPS increase that you get from elixirs. My breaker was rocking a two line five, five with no beneficial damage stats for the longest time. And that was fine. Eventually I did go and change that up and got them into damage lines. But at the time being the 40 set itself was enough to carry me through my content and make me do a lot more damage than before. So please, please, please be flexible. If your elixir is telling you to go one way, don't be stubborn and not follow it. Just go with the flow and follow the elixir wherever it goes. You know why? Because the flow looks good. So there it is, guys. Five tips to help you guys on your elixir cutting journey. And as I said at the beginning, unfortunately, at the end of the day, sometimes elixirs just don't go your way. So it might not be a mistake that you're making, but it's just that luck isn't going your way that day. So for me, I usually just say, OK, I'm putting these elixirs down. My elixirs are not elixiring today. Maybe they will start elixiring tomorrow. And then I just wait until the next day and see if the flow changes. So hopefully this advice was helpful for you guys. And as always, let me know what you think about this video down in the comment section below. And also, if you want to see more videos like this, please remember to hit the like button, hit the sub button, ring the bell for notifications. And also I stream on twitch.tv slash miso every single day. So hopefully I see you guys there. But if not, hopefully I see y'all on the next video. And oh yeah, on Monday, 3 p.m. PST, I will be having a podcast with Mr. John Powell himself, the Giga Chad, on my stream at 3 p.m. PST. So hopefully I see you guys there. But if you can't make it, 
the video will also be up on YouTube as well. So I hope you guys enjoy.